Hello everyone. The last time I did one of these, I was out the door and I didn't have a mic, so bear with me. I'll have to probably adjust this a few times. Uh, welcome to the 2022 AQHA World Show. I know most of us have been here for a few days or a week, but we're almost through the ranch classes and we're getting ready to start the all-around classes. But I uh, wanted to start off with saying that as of next year, Working Western Rail will be an AQHA class. So that's exciting. We're glad that the different committees, the show committees, the ranching committees, that everyone got to work together, that everyone got to work together and get that put into a class. We'll, we'll do what we can here. So with the Working Western Rail, the class's purpose is simply to view a horse as it would work in its day-to-day -day life. So a horse that's, no matter what its job is, it's a working horse, it's gonna have a job later on in its life, just like the pleasure, Western pleasure classes are to the Western riding, the trail, the horsemanship, just like the hunter under saddle is to the over fence classes. The working Western rail is put in place to give these horses a basis to work on, a foundation to build into different classes. Could be roping, could be working cow horse, could be very many different classes. So what we want to look for, what AQHA wants to look for, is a horse that has just a true four beat walk, just like Stacy's doing currently. Just a very flat footed, methodical walk. That horse is not in any big rush. You could ride that walk all day long, no matter where you're at. You're gonna be comfortable, the horse is gonna be happy, you'll have a good day. But she's gonna go ahead and kick her up to an extended walk here where you guys can see. Key word here is extended. This is not fast walk, this is not running walk, this is not a rack. It is an extended walk. The definition of an extension is a lengthen, lengthening of the stride. You know, sometimes you'll even see a horse that may be going faster and their stride actually gets shorter. So think about that when you're, when you're showing this class. You want your horse to just demonstrate a lengthening of the stride. This is Dory. She's helping us tonight with Miss Stacy, and she's doing a fabulous job of her extended walk. Let's see if we, here we go. Maybe if I face this way, that seems to work better. Okay, so. Again, great extended walk here. This horse is not in a big rush, but she's covering ground. She's equally strided all the way through. And she looks comfortable. She doesn't look like she's being pushed. There's no unnecessary animation in Stacy. To me, this is a very credit earning walk. Go ahead and kick her up to a jog. And again, with the jog, the trot, whatever you wanna call it, it is a two beat gait. Right here we have a horse that's, obviously she's got two beats going here, she's working her diagonals. Again, this is a trot that you could ride all day. If you're checking fence, if you're looking for a lost cow but you don't want to scare, this is the kind of jog I, you'd want to be, be using. You're going to cover some ground a little faster than a walk and your horse is still sure footed. Go ahead and kick her up to that extended jog. Again, this extended trot, she's just opening her stride. She's covering ground. There's no unnecessary kicking with her feet. There's no unnecessary movement. The horse is happy. Her ears are forward. She's working. This is a very comfortable horse. And you can tell she's, she's happy right here. Go ahead and walk for a second, Stacy. So I wanna address one thing that I'm sure someone in the audience is gonna ask. Posting versus standing, doesn't matter. Show your horse what works best for you and your horse. It's that simple. To me, I thought that looked great. That posting trot right there was wonderful. That's a great way to show that extended trot to me for that horse. Go ahead and lope. So again, Stacy and Dory are showing us a very cadence lope. It's three beats. There's no 
you know, she's, she's got her ears back, but to me, they're not pinned. She puts them up, she's working. When she put her ears back, the only reason she did that was because Stacy was telling her something. If I'm looking for a horse to work, I want one that's gonna be listening to me. And if I just pick my hand up an inch, I want them to show that they're listening. And I think Dory did a fabulous job of that. And go ahead and go to that extended lope. So right here, this is extended. This is not a flat run. This is not a run down. This isn't raining. This is just an extended lope. This is like, oh, oh no, I left the gate open. I better go over there, but I don't want to run so fast that I'm going to scare the cows and make them freak out, okay? This is not a race. There's going to be no timers in the amateur or the open working Western Rail. I don't, are there going to be timers, Karen? No, no timers, okay. So that's official. There will be no timers, right? So this is not a run. You can go ahead and bring her back. And right here, this is a great transition down. You know, sometimes I see people, they feel them, you know, come back and they slam them into the ground and try to get them to just lope. It's okay to take a couple strides. It doesn't happen to have that second, but you want it to be clean and you want your horse again to be responsive to you and to do its job willingly and happily. Go ahead and stop. Are there any questions at this point? Do we have any questions? No? So something else I'd like to talk about for a moment while I have your attention is the Professional Horseman's Endowment Fund. It's going to help the any professional horseman in crisis. There have been several instances, friends of mine, people that I know, people that you all know that you may not even know were, were helped by the Professional Horseman's endowment and crisis fund. Um, there are going to be some, some buckets at the top of the stairs on the way down uh, by the ramp if you would like to donate. Neutrina has been gracious enough to match every dollar that we make tonight. So let's put a big round of applause for Neutrina. And another topic that I'd like to talk about is in the Working Western Rail class, it seems to be a habit or it seems to just happen, I'm not sure which, that inevitably people are going to be about where I'm at, okay? There is easily enough room to fit 10 horses between me and that rail comfortably, okay? Use the arena, be smart. Your horses aren't gonna look good when they're five feet from the judge. They're not gonna be able to see how good their stride is. They're not gonna be able to see their cadence. Get close to the wall. These judges are the best judges in the country. They're the trained, they know what they're looking for. Mr. Halverson is gonna do a great job. Mr. Halverson, please stand up. Our new director of judges. Thank you, sir. They're gonna have these judges prepared. They're gonna know, okay, this is an extended gate, this is not a run, this is an extended walk, this is not a rack, right? They are looking for horses that these judges, that these professional judges, these professionals such as Mr. Halverson, Karen, these people, they, they know good horses. Show them a good horse, don't show them a fast horse, show them a good horse, show them one you wanna ride all day, right? I, I don't think I'd wanna ride one running as fast as it can all day long. But if it's got a good extended, yeah, I might kick it up to that and just ride across the field just for fun. But I'm not gonna run just to run. And to me, the, you know, be courteous to your, sorry, be courteous to your fellow exhibitors, okay? Don't try to cut people off. We're all in here for the same reason. We're all paying the same amount of money. We all wanna be here. We all wanna enjoy our horses, okay? To me, this would be as far in as I would ever want to be if I'm needing to pass, personally. Now, again, it's, it's not very ring etiquette-like to pass on the outside of someone. So if someone is here, Stacy, would you mind coming over here? If someone's right here and you're coming around, come like right up behind me, Stacy and you're coming around here, look around. See, by the time you've gone this direction, you know the other horses in there. You watch them in the warm-up. You know who's gonna be fast, who's gonna be bigger. 
make an educated decision right here. Should I cut up and try to get in front of this horse? Or should I go in, let that horse get way down there, all of a sudden I have a whole lot more rail to show my horse. And horses look better going straight than they do going in a curve. Your judge will get a better look at them, okay? Any questions about that, about arena placement? Any situations you've been in you may have a question about? Yes. Okay. So the question is, and this is a great question, the question is if in the extended trot tomorrow you are coming up behind a horse and you realize my horse is extending faster than that one and maybe they're around here, right? What do you do? You need to make that decision when you're making that corner. Because to me, if they're already here, and it might be the horse right in front of you, I don't know. You kind of have to make that decision on the fly. I'll be honest, I've had to cut inside before and I've had to get this far in. Did I like it? No, I didn't like it because I knew it wasn't showing my horse the best of her ability, okay? But by the time I got to the other end, I was trying to get to that end and give myself some more space and get away from those horses that are either faster or they're just cutting in, you know, just, and here's the thing, if everyone would just be smart with their horses, we wouldn't even run into those issues, right? Just show your horses, there's, there's no sense to be way out here, six wide, right? Yes. Right. Yes, yes, that's a great point. So the second part of her question was, if you have to pass, do you go back to the rail? To me, I would try to, but I wouldn't. Stacy, would you mind stepping right up here? So if I'm coming around and I'm like, oh, I'm definitely faster than that horse and we're further over, but this will be fine. You all can see it. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna pass right here. I'm not gonna go, crap, I've gotta get over, okay? Sorry, Dory. I know Dory and I knew she wouldn't care, okay? Now, what I do wanna, test, okay. What I do wanna do is get up here, give myself a horse length or two, and then get back over here in this lane, right? Because maybe there's someone that is going faster coming up behind me, but I'm like, man, they're going so fast, those judges won't even be able to see their number. I'm gonna let them go, right? I'm, does that make sense? Let them zoom on past you and give yourself a good line on that rail. Get seen, right? And you'll hear me say, get seen, you think, oh, well, I gotta be on the inside. If that judge is standing right there, they will not be able to see your number. They will see a blur, and that is it. Any questions? Any others? Yes. Okay, so this is a great question. This is one that I really like. What about the horse's head position on the rail? Okay. Show them the way they were made. Don't try to run a horse that's made to be up here. Show them to their confirmation. If a horse is made to be a little bit more elevated through its shoulders, let it be there because it'll probably be a better mover. If you show them to their confirmation, if you show them how, they're, how they come out of their shoulders, okay? This mare right here that I'm on, she comes up a little bit more out of her shoulders than Dory does. Dory's gonna show a little lower headed, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. To me, which, but show your horse to the way that horse was built to be shown, the way that horse was built to work, right? If that horse is gonna be going out, working, going across a field, you don't want their head down in the dirt. If they do stumble, you're going down with them. If their head's up a little bit and they stumble, they'll just keep going. If they hit a rock, they hit a limb, they'll just keep going. But if their head's way down here and they're not paying attention to their surroundings, down they go. That's kind of the way I, I personally look at it. Um, and, and I believe that the judges would, will, will reward what they see, what you put in front of them, if it looks natural, okay? This is, these horses, this is supposed to be the first step of their journey. 
So we want to see what this horse does naturally on its own before it finds what its job will be. Whether it's going to be working 10 hours a day riding fence or whether it's going to be out catching calves or doctoring steers, whatever that job may be for that horse. But you don't see many rope horses going around with their head down because they're not made that way, right? So it's, to me, it's all about, it just goes back to confirmation, goes back to how that horse was made and how they move their best. Uh, does, that, does that make sense? Okay. Right, like if they're like super tough, that's not a pretty look. Just let them, let them be. Let them show where they were born to show. Saw another hand up here. Yes. Yes, so the, the, it's a great question. Thank you, Sharon. So they will be coming down the middle at a working trot, okay? So the working trot is a little between your regular standard jog and an extended trot. Stacy's gonna give us an example. So to me, this is a working trot. This is the trot if I knew somewhere on this three mile fence that I've got to cover today, there's one or two posts or maybe some wire down this is a trot that I can get through that, and I'm, I'm going fast enough that I can get through the, the fence that day, but I'm not going so fast that I'm going to miss something, right? Like maybe there's, you know, a limb on something, but I didn't see it. I just thought it was a vine, you know? This is if I'm going too fast, but it's also fast enough that I can cover three miles of fence if I need to, and it's comfortable. Right? She's not getting beaten up by the saddle. She's covering the ground. Any other questions? Yes. Okay, so the question, the question is, what about rain length? Should they be loose? Should they be tight? Again, this is, this is a you know, a hard, a hard thing to answer. Um, to me, it's kind of an in-between. It's just like you wouldn't go all day on a full drape with your reins flopping around, but you don't want to go all day with your horse choked up where they don't like their job, right? And they're backing up like this one, okay? I just want a nice, comfortable rein length that me and my horse can use all day, whether, no matter what my job is. You know, maybe I'm just the head honcho and I get to walk around and watch everyone work all day. But I'm still not gonna let it be on a full drape because if my horse goes like that to check on a, maybe it saw a funny looking rock, maybe it's, you know, there's a puddle it's wanting to check out. I don't want my rain so long it's gonna step in it on the next step. Yes. Okay, so with those buckets, if you don't have cash on you, there are a QR codes that you can scan. It'll take you directly to the website to make a donation, which again, it's greatly appreciated. Us as professionals, we, we don't always have, you know, the, the best of luck, whether it be with health or with weather or just, you know, sometimes just stuff happens. And AQHA is there for, for many of us to, to help and provide assistance when it's needed. Any other questions? Yes. So the question is, what do you do if someone comes by you and slides in and cuts you off. To be completely honest, there's not much you can do at that point, okay? To me, when that, when that has happened to me, and it has, and it's very rarely is it ever on purpose, I promise. Like sometimes it's people just, they're trying to get back to that rail, they're trying to, it's a mess, there's, we're 10 wide. Just tell your horse everything's okay and keep showing. You know, don't let your horse get scared. 
Or, yeah, Stacy has a good point. Just say something. Be like, hey, make, give me some room, you know. And, and hopefully they'll take it as a, you're trying to help them as much as it is they're trying to help you by, by giving you proper room. Yes? Okay, so that is also a good question. I personally am not an AQHA judge, but I will hand the mic off to someone who is for a judge's perspective, okay? So the question is, Stacy, if in a situation where you get cut off and your horse almost comes to a stop, you lose momentum, and then almost immediately, as soon as you find your, your stride again, you have to go around that person. As a judge, do you take that into consideration? You got to look toward the big thing. I would say yes, you have to take it into consideration, but what I would also say to you is that what Stacy talked about earlier, you planning where you're going to be far in the back, a lot of times you can avoid that situation. So one thing you can do, don't, don't be pushed all the way up to the rail. Don't be pushed all the way up to the rail. <laughs> And, and to add on to her point, as an exhibitor, that sometimes they don't know what happened. Sometimes, I mean, there's a lot going on in here. They're trying, in some cases, to not get ran over. Sometimes they're like, oh, no, there's a herd coming behind me, and they've got to move. And then they look over, and all they see is that you were loping off again. They may not even know that you got cut off. The best thing I can say, and, and Stacy did make a good point, Give yourself a little bit of room here so that you can move if you feel someone, and you can feel them. You can feel them then when they're right here, if they're fading towards you. If they're gonna cut you off close enough to affect your ride, you're gonna feel them fading before they even get past your horse's head, okay? And give yourself a little bit of room here. Be like, oh, okay, we're just gonna back up just a little bit. We're not gonna brake, but maybe we're, gonna, we're just gonna pump the brakes a little bit and slow down, or just not even pump the brakes, but back off the gas. Right, like just like sit back a little bit and let your horse just carry you for a couple strides without pushing them up. And then when that horse gets around you, hopefully they go deep in the corner and then in that case, cut your corner a little bit and get away from them so that you can avoid that situation in the future. Yes, any other questions? The correct way to reverse. This is also a good question because I've seen it done many different ways. I've seen people, you know, like they're walking up, they're going to reverse just like this. Oh, can't turn away from the big screen. Or maybe they just do a 180. They just do a quick turn, okay? I just did a 90. Anyway, so I think this goes back to arena placement. Okay, so like if the horse in front of you does a, you just zips right around and all of a sudden you're looking at each other, I'd let them walk past me and I'd walk up and circle behind them. 
because obviously they're already faster than me. They were in front of me when we reversed. Okay, so I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna let you get ahead of me a little bit more and then I'll reverse. Or if you're in a great spot and you're right here by yourself and the herd's over there, I just turn around and stay right there. You know, I, I don't think, I don't think that it would make a big difference other than just going back to making sure that you get your horse shown to the best of yours and your horse's abilities. Would you, would you agree as a judge? 100% arena placement. Stacy agrees, it's 100% about arena placement. Just, just ride smart, show smart, and, and it'll go well. Any other questions? Yep. Okay, so this is this is a good question. I've been asked a lot. Um, I'm going to hand this one off to my to uh, Stacy as well, because this would be more of a judge's perspective question. Um, the question is. Is it good horsemanship, good equitation, or does it not matter whether or not you're on the correct diagonal? She's ready for this one. I don't think it, I don't think it likes you. As far as the rules. Bring it down more. As far as the rules, it absolutely doesn't matter at all. And, but I will say that Does that, does that answer your question? Okay, wonderful. Any other questions? Well, I just wanted to thank you all for staying up tonight and, and joining us. Um, please help me give another round of applause for Stacy and Dory. They did a wonderful job as examples. And we thank you all again, and good luck to everyone.